you just listened to a great song, a live song from our upcoming artist right now. We're going to speak with her. It's Dance, live from Montreux, and uh, it's out in Switzerland. We've wanted to have her on the show for many, many years. Very talented saxophonist, and we have her on today. Candy Dolfer, welcome to the Upper Room. Thank you very much. And uh, great, great album, new Thank album, you. and DVD, we should mention. Uh, uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Tell, tell us about selecting a, a live uh, show uh, from a prestigious festival, but I'm, you've done so many different concerts. How did you decide to uh, release this one? Well, actually, um, I had done a previous live recording uh, a couple of years ago called Live in Amsterdam, so I wasn't really planning on doing a new one. But uh, when you play the Montreux Jazz Festival, they always record, thank God. <laughs> right, and you can see them online, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and, you, right. and uh, you can, uh, if you want to, you can buy the tapes. And uh, we actually did that one year, but we played there three times, and I didn't bother for the other two, which was stupid because uh, <laughs> eventually it turned out that uh, we were going to make a Live in Montreux album, and then uh, you could, you know, mix it more easier because then we would get a f 24 tracks. So the great thing about this album is that it's uh, what you hear is just a two track from the... Uh, the mixing board, mm -hmm. and it's amazing that it sounds so good as it does because that you know that's usually not the case. Right. So yeah. we were very lucky with that, and um, and the idea to do these concerts and and put them on DVD and CD was uh, for my record company uh, Eagle Records because they uh, were recently starting to do a whole series of uh, best concerts uh, that that have been held in Montreux. They they just uh, accumulated the rights so. And I just was, you know, a new uh, addition to their label. So they said, did you ever play the Montra? And I said, yes. And they said, should we, you know, release it? And I said, well, it's a while ago. I don't know if it's any good. And when I started listening to the tapes, I was, yeah, pleasantly surprised. It's yeah. kind of great. And, and you can, uh, what for me is very important that you can feel the atmosphere, you know, from the moment. It should be, you know, it should be as much fun as that you were in the audience or nearly as much fun. And uh, luckily, the sound quality is that, you know, that good, that that you really get that vibe going and you hear the audience and everything. So, yeah. Now, the best place for people, they can go to your website, candydolfer.com. And uh, how, how about, uh, I mean, it's available, Tower Records and all through major distributors. How, how about your record company's website? Give a plug for them. Uh, I don't know. I don't think they have a, a sale uh, um, um, department at okay. the, on the website. So it's uh, it's just, you know, you can go there for information and stuff. But uh, I think, uh, you know, all the big uh, uh, um, websites, you know, Amazon and stuff, you can you can buy it there. Right. And it's uh, supposed to be in stores. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Pick up the DVD as well. Yeah. Um, Candy Dolfer, uh, international star, music, uh, jazz, funk, soul. She sings and has got a great band as well. Tell us, um, I know you did some tours. Our, our buddies Chance Howard and John Blackwell uh, did a couple of short tours with you. But who's the core of your band that you've been working with? Well, um, yeah, of course, that was amazing to have uh, both of them, John Blackwell and Chance Howard, on, on the tour. But uh, that's in, in it's uh, recently that we sort of asked them to come with us because I met them, you know, during the Prince tour. Mm -hmm. But the core band has always been uh, uh, Ilko Bett, who's a guitar player and, and my best friend, mm -hmm. and Thomas Bank, who's a keyboardist, and uh, my, uh, no, not my husband, but my, <laughs> we've been together for 11 years. Okay. And that sort of always will be the core and you know whoever talented wonderful musicians we can get we just add on and but it's really important for me to work with those two people always because they really um yeah they just you know they understand exactly what i want we have the same taste in music the same um thoughts about you know recording and also about performing you know the same kind of input and it's lovely i don't have to make all the decisions on my own ultimately i'm the sort of the boss but right it's wonderful to have somebody that you know can back you up and in, in my case i have two somebodies and, right and they're just the best of friends also so that's uh, it's a wonderful thing uh, to have that but uh we've just started writing with the three of us and then added uh chance howard on who was so nice to yeah. come and visit us in holland mm -hmm. and that was a great combination too and we made some really really nice songs so is he playing bass or keys or uh, everything? Oh, yeah. and singing too. Yeah, he just plays everything. Yeah, Give him a ukulele and he'll right. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll make something out of it. But he, he is uh, he amazed me uh, with his bass playing because I, I sort of knew that he was a bass player and I, and we jammed with Prince a couple of times when he and you know would take the bass from somebody else who would then start crying. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, not Ron because she holds her own. She's the uh -huh. best that I know. But um, you know. And, uh, but we never really, you know, I never heard him play for a long time, so he came into our studio and just picked up the instrument, and we just wrote a couple of songs just off his bass line, so, uh, 
Yeah, he's very, very good at that too. But uh, I think anything he picks up, he does well. Now, every time I see Chance, I say, Chance, when is your solo record coming out? And he always yeah. tells me, yeah, it's just around the corner. And you know, Well, I, you know what? I've listened. <laughs> I, I know he has a whole album in his pocket right now. He has right. beautiful songs. And it's it's very, I think it can do really, really well. So I think we should just do a petition and yeah, yeah. get people in the streets <laughs> <All right. laughs> to march up to him and make him, you know, release it. I think he's just like all of us. He's... Uh, he might be just a little bit mu too much of a perfectionist, you know. He he keeps working on his songs, but they're w brilliant, beautiful uh, lyrics, lovely songs, and, and very uh, for me in my ears, it sounds really commercial as well. So right, yeah, I think it's just a matter of time, and then uh, everybody should learn about the chance. So uh, Candy Dolfer is our special guest right now. Pleasure to have her here on WBOF in the Upper Room with Joe Kelly. Go to your newsstands. Uh, Candy Dolfer's on the cover of the latest issue of Abyss Jazz Magazine. the I believe it's the March edition, right? Uh, yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice story and, and great picture of you, so Thanks. pick that up. And uh, we're going to get into some more music live from Montreux, out in Switzerland, and uh, this is Candy Dolphin and her band. And uh, this, I think we're going to go with Longing for the Funk, because we play a lot of funk on our show. So tell, tell us about working this with your band on stage. Yeah, Lonely for the Funk is just, it's actually a song that we never really released un unless, you know, except on this album. And it was always a fun song because uh, I'm always uh, trying to find the ultimate instrumental song, but it still should have a little bit of vocals on it, you know, because that's, for me, that's the ultimate marriage between vocal music and instrumental music. And uh, this one is a real good one, but we still have to record it, you know, for the studio. I right. think we will do that, but uh, we had so much more ideas that we didn't, you know, really get to it. But uh, this is a nice uh, live version of it. All right, let's give a listen to it right now. CandyDolfer.com. Candy will be back with us in just a few moments. This is called Longing. And that's live music from Candy Dolfer, live from Montreux, Switzerland. It came out uh, last year, but it was recorded in 2002. But it's sounding great and definitely pick up uh, the DVD as well at uh, your independent record outlet or your chain store. It's widely available, widely distributed. Uh, Candy's with us right now, and uh, you, you're originally from uh, Holland, Amsterdam, right? Yeah, I still yeah. live there. Yeah. Tell, tell us about uh, the city, because when people, I've never been there, but when people, our friends go there to tour or, or visit, they just rave about going there. It's such a great place, right? Yeah, Amsterdam is nice because it's, uh, in, 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 on one side, it's a really worldly town, you know, it's the, it's the capital of Holland, but on the other side, it's just like, just as small as a village, so the feeling you get there is very, you know, everybody knows each other, um, you can walk the streets pretty safe, it's, it's, uh, it's a good environment, and uh, I mean, although it's changed a little bit over the years, it's still kind of a free-thinking, you know, fun you know kind of place where, where a lot of cultures mix and uh, mm -hmm. that's how i like it i love it right. when uh, when you know you have so many cultures uh, running around uh, through uh -huh. each other and that's still the case in amsterdam and the jazz scene i mean it's it's all very small you know because we, uh, our population in holland is only 50 million people so um you know it's not a big jazz scene not a big music scene but there's always something interesting going on and uh, there's a lot of live jam sessions always going on, so uh, yeah, it's it's nice. It's not New York. <laughs> right. And now, <laughs> from from your experience of traveling in in Canada and the U.S., what would be the city? Uh, I mean, you mentioned New York. Would that be a city comparable to the multicultural experience? Yeah, I think it it it, it is. It's just not as tough as New York. You know, it, it, it's a little bit more friendly, maybe. Uh, but the whole idea of just you know existing next to each other sometimes you know working together that's that that's sort of the same f thing in amsterdam but i must say that that the the feeling of amsterdam i found more in chicago for one strange reason which is my favorite city oh, okay and uh yeah the, the, the way people react there you know and, and talk to you is sort of a little bit more like amsterdam or vice versa well i know family is a big part of your life and your dad accomplished musician in his own right hans uh and your mom i believe your mom we were standing she was dancing next to us uh when we saw the musicology tour in New Jersey, she was there, right? Yes, yeah, she's yeah. always there. She's, she's with uh, uh, Maceo's uh, tour manager. They were. Yeah, 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 they're best of friends. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, <laughs> we've got a her. sort of a club going on. Uh, right. Together, and uh, but it's nice. And Inge is my manager, and uh, so she's always with me. She's also the tour manager when we uh, tour with the band. Okay. So uh, yeah, we always travel together, and it's fun, and we're, we're really good friends. And uh, aside from being mom and daughter, right. and although I wouldn't recommend it to everybody, you know, to to take your mom and ask them to be your manager with right. us, it <laughs> works fantastically. And I'm I'm so happy she does it. I I, I wouldn't even you know want to begin thinking about uh, having somebody else. 
unless he says I want to quit. <laughs> right, right. So uh, you know, Candy Dolfer, uh, right now she's uh, presently doing some dates in Reading, Pennsylvania, the Berks Jazz Fest. What kind of festival? I know you did one date this weekend. What what happened this weekend? What's coming up this weekend? Well, it was a, f- it was a really fun thing. I was asked by Jason Miles, who is a, a producer and a, and a keyboard player. But uh, if you la- read the list of people he's worked with, you just faint. Uh, it's from Miles Davis to David Samuel. Actually, he played with and worked with all my heroes and worked on my favorite albums. So it was a big, big honor to be asked by him. And, and the great thing was we started out with a, a tribute to Marvin Gaye and Motown. Mm-hmm. And there were all these wonderful people, Jay Beckenstein, uh, Bobby Caldwell, uh, so many people that we were playing together with. And then uh, next Saturday, or coming Saturday, it's going to be a tribute to Ivan Lintz. And Ivan Lintz is going to be there. Um, Jane Monheit, Brenda Russell, Eliane Elias, um, Leonardo Amuedo, who's a fantastic Brazilian guitar player who's lived in Holland, actually, so that will be a nice reunion. And and my favorite bass player of all times, Will Lee, is going to be there. Oh, so. yeah, from the Paul Schaefer's uh, band, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I, Will Lee also plays on every, you know, all the records that that I like, <laughs> he <laughs> right. plays on it. So. Yeah. Uh, for, for an all-star session, you know, a live concert like that, how much rehearsal time do you get? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't rehearse so much. We right, did, right. like, we went over the songs once. Uh-huh. And uh, actually, I liked that because uh, Jason Miles, he told me, like, I like to keep it spontaneous and... That's exactly what I like, you know. Of course, it's a bit scary if you play with all people that you've never been with before, and it's uh, you know, and songs you haven't done before. But uh, I must say, it's so much nicer to you know just improvise. I mean, that's a big part of the attraction of music. I think that you can just you know go with the flow and see what happens. And uh, he had uh, such good musicians that it was uh, you know piece of cake to do that. And all the information you can go to candydolfer dot com for uh, all the upcoming shows and the news on the upcoming record. And you stay involved with your website with uh, comments and great pictures up there. Uh, we're airing this interview in the uh, MPG Music Club chat room as well as WVOF and the Upper Room uh, twenty four hour website. Um, you know, a lot of people also know you for touring with Prince and different bands and recently uh, Musicology. Um, tell us about your first experience with Prince. I know it, it got off to a little. A rough start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a pretty rough start. Yeah, that, it's actually it's it's a wonderful story to think back to. But I was uh, I was 18 years old, uh-huh. and Prince came to Holland to do shows, and I was a fan anyway. I would have gone to the concert, you know, if I hadn't been asked to play there. But the Dutch promoter asked uh, he needed a, a support act to sort of fill up the gap for the audience, you know, to come in and wait for for the main show to start. So they asked me, uh, so it was not by Prince, but, you know, just the, the Dutch promoter. And up until then, I hadn't made any records or something, so I had a live reputation, and I played in small clubs and stuff like that. So, yeah, when they asked me, although I never wanted to do Sport X because it's always such a, you know, a bad place to be in, because they never treat you right and everything, I said, well, this is Prince, you know, you can't get any bigger than this, so yay, okay. So we went there, we sound checked, we were, of course, totally nervous and excited and off the moon. And then uh, one hour before our show, uh, somebody, the promoter, came up to me and said, uh, yeah, Kenny, I'm really sorry, but it's not going to happen. So I said, what? <laughs> but I'm a very proud person. And um, up until that week before the gig, uh, so many journalists had called in newspapers like, oh, our, our Kenny's going to do Prince's Support Act. And, you know, I talked so much uh, that I felt so embarrassed that mm-hmm. this was not going to happen, that I was really angry. So... Uh, now I wouldn't have the guts to do that, but back then I I probably had, and I just went up to, first I went to Mr. Fornioli, a uh, princess right. then That's manager who yeah. died, and he was the typical manager with his big cigar in his mouth and stuff, so I went up to him and I, I you know, I said, hey, listen, um, you got to let me play because, uh, you know, the prince doesn't know what he's missing and I'm really angry and you shouldn't treat people like that. Right. <laughs> and he was laughing, and then I had the, the nerve to go up to Sheila E, who I'd never met and was my idol, and I... I blabber mouthed to her as well, <laughs> but they were all really nice to me. And they, you know, they, they said they said, "Okay, well, we'll, we'll say it to Prince." Like right. you know, yeah. never. Right. And, uh, and then I wrote a little note and said, uh, "Dear Prince, um, why don't you let us play? You missed a chance to uh, um, hear a girl blow her ass off on a saxophone." Sorry about right. the word. No, that's okay. Okay, that's okay. how how I wrote it. And um, and I went up to uh, to the manager and I gave it to him and I said, "You just give this to Prince and uh, poo poo poo." So uh, then I went home, and then the manager just smiled. He thought, you know, I was a lunatic. 
And uh, I went home, but Prince was there to perform for three days. And one way or another, I, probably Faith, uh, my friends almost forced me to come with them to, to go to the show just as an audience. And I said, I don't want to go. Everybody knows he canceled me. And, you know, so, he, so they said, no, you, you, you're his biggest fan. You've got to go. Put on some dark glasses and get in the car and go. So I went. And then uh, we were a bit early because uh, we wanted to get good seats. And uh, they uh, suddenly the somebody said, you know, from the loudspeakers, can can backstage. Mm-hmm. So I thought my parents were in an accident or something, and I ran backstage. And then they said, yeah, Prince wants to make it up to you. Can you play? And I said, well, yeah, sure, but I didn't bring my saxophone. Right. So in an hour's time, my parents came from a different city, had police escort, blah blah blah, <laughs> and. I got my saxophone really uh, three seconds before I had to jump on and do my solo. Mm-hmm. And then the rest is history because he apparently liked it and started calling me after that and inviting me to do more stuff. But it's it's a wonderful yeah. you know, thing. How it started, yeah. Yeah, and it shows a sense of humor because in the end it turned out that he, it was totally not his fault that we couldn't do the sport act and he didn't even know about it. You know, it's all, all so different. And and he still laughs about it sometimes. You know, he, he um, pretend he, he pretends he's me, and you know. <laughs> <laughs> and and obvi- obviously, he still still loves having you in the band because you, you've done some some of his uh, big tours, and most recently, Musicology. Are are you on any part of the the new album, Thirty One Twenty One? Yeah, yeah, we did some. Actually, I don't know which songs are going to be on it because we did uh, I think three or four tracks while we were there again with uh, Maceo and Greg Boyer and yeah. Ray. Yeah. And uh, and I actually don't know, you know, what ended up where. So I'm really yeah, anxious I'm, to get the record. Yeah, we got the record. We're we're hearing horns on it. So oh, good. <laughs> yeah, he's got you represented on there. Yeah, oh, great. That's great. great. Um, now now your own projects. Uh, I'm looking at some of the dates coming up. You've got a, a great mix of your your own music and uh, a hip hop artist out, out your way. Uh, Extens is his name. Yeah, yeah, that's a very nice product. It's a Dutch rapper who raps okay. in Dutch. He can also, you know, rap in English, but that's his thing. Mm-hmm. And we're going to do uh, some songs together where, um, uh, you know, big hits, and then we're going to translate them into Dutch and play on it. It's, it's a special thing in Holland where they uh, do that more often, and it's a sponsored thing, but it's, it's going to be fun. And it, I love hip-hop, so any time I can sort of, you know, collaborate with people like that, I, I always do it because, uh, yeah, for me it's just a extension of funk and jazz and 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 i love to be you know around people who who are creative with words as well as people who are creative with um, with music and you'll also be uh having a show with your dad coming up uh later this spring right yeah we're doing yeah. many shows because uh-huh. uh sort of i, d- I didn't want to go and tour before we had a new album out so uh we took a lot of you know freestanding gigs and with my dad it's so much fun he has a, a fantastic band with uh, a dj a double bass player a rapper and him and then I then play with him, and it's a great combination of everything. It's it's improvised, but it's very hardcore funk and house music, and and it attracts uh, young people, you know, like really twenty or fifteen to twenty five years old. And and I think that's great because my father always does that really well. He he knows that if he just keeps his regular old or I say to his regular audience, right, right. they will grow old with him, and at one point there won't be any audience anymore. Exactly. So you have yeah. to make sure, you know, you always get new and young people, and, and I think for my dad and also for me, that's our main goal in music, to make sure that through our stuff that people get a little bit of the future, but also a little bit of the past, you know, and it doesn't have to be so scholarly. It, it's really about, you know, just playing for them and hoping they'll catch on them a little bit of Charlie Parker or... or James Brown or Macy or whatever, and hopefully through our music that will happen. Well, well, a uh, uh, medley of uh, uh, music that was on the Musicology tour, which we featured, uh, you know, since it came out, is uh, Candy Dolfer featured prominently on vocals and playing saxophone on uh, the Question of You, Fallen, uh, Prince, and, and the One as yeah. well. Tell tell us about uh, you know how that that medley and working together i mean it's amazing just watching that in concert how, how did you work that with prince and prince asking you to do this yeah he did and i would never volunteer myself and say, <laughs> say hey prince i know how to sing <laughs> can you just give me a song then uh, that's it's not how it goes and i would i was almost dying because he knew he, he sort of knows that i sing and, and i do sing but for me it's really you know the saxophone is the most important thing i don't have a very good voice I just do it because I love doing it. No, you know? I think I beg to differ, but you okay. go ahead. <laughs> you go ahead. <laughs> and um, 
And so slowly um, it started evolving and doing a little bit of background for him. And, and then it went into, can you do the, the vocals on Purple Rain? And I said, no, 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 no. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just the background vocals, mind you. But that's such an icon, you know, of the song that I wanted, you know, I thought I couldn't do that. But he just listened to it and says, perfect, thank you. And then, right. okay, so you're a vocalist now also. Mm -hmm. And then it started getting into, you know, you sing this and you sing that. <laughs> I just didn't want to refuse, but uh, it was really scary. I mean, to sing together with, you know, I know it's just a little thing, but sing together with the greatest vocalist in the world is a bit, you know, uh, <laughs> right, right. scary. Well, well, hopefully... Uh Prince will make that call again and do another tour in the in the future. And yeah, I love be, working with him. Great. Yeah, and it's such a you know it's such a thrill and it's I mean first of all him but it's not just him he also always has amazing people around him always new talent and you know it's always it's so exciting to be there and then on top of all of that I'm in the horn section with my you know best friend my idol my mentor Maceo Parker. Right, right. Yeah, it can't get any better than that. And, and Greg Boyer, of course. And, yes, uh, yes, same there, thing. Same. There, there wasn't a trumpet player on, on the musicology tour, but... No, uh, we, we, were, we had the strangest horn section in the world, two altos and yeah, a trombone right. player. Uh, who, whose idea was that? Uh, like, Prince. Right, yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. And for some reason, it were, or, well, probably he's always right, so it works, and it was great, but right. uh, it's not something, when you see it on paper, you would think that would be a good idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, it, yeah, it definitely works, and, uh, you know, if, if you're going to go out and see candy doll for this weekend uh the exact date at, at ready pennsylvania burks jazz fest is uh the 25th yes 25th of march 7 p.m the world premiere concert okay <laughs> so it's going to be great uh Reading, pennsylvania and uh look out for that upcoming studio album you, your own band working hard um you're recording primarily in amsterdam well, actually, I live outside Amsterdam now, and we've got this great little mini farm with uh, a great studio. So oh, up until now, we've all been recording, you know, between the cows and the sheep. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Nice it, atmosphere, yeah. Yeah, it's nice, and, and uh, it still sounds funky, so mm -hmm. that's good. So, and, so uh, uh, oh, go ahead. Yeah, and we think we're going to sort of pretty much finish it there, maybe just mixing in, in a real studio, but uh, it sounds great. All that information, you can go to candydolfer.com and please pick up the DVD, CD, live from Montreux, Switzerland. Uh, it was a show out in 2002, but uh, it's a great, great documentary of, uh, you know, you and your band doing what you do best. And uh, we're going to go out and want to first thank you for, you know, wanted to have you on for so many years. I mean, you're still young, but you've, you've accomplished so much since the, the first, first big hits back uh, in the late 80s. Um, we've got, uh, I think we're going to go out with... Uh, we spoke on the musicology medley you did and also sang into one of your biggest songs. Lily was here, and then we'll get into more music from live from Montreux. So thanks, Candy. Cool. Thank you so much for having me, and uh, say hi to all the listeners out there. And all right. Let's love. All right. Thanks, Candy. <laughs>